If you clicked on this video to find out how to put a tampon in, you are in the right spot. I'm gonna walk you through this step by step. And if you are nervous, just know that every person alive was nervous the first time trying to put a tampon in, so you are not alone. And don't worry, you got this. I'm gonna take you through it step by step. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant. I specialize in women's health and gynecology. You're watching In The Pink, and if you're new here, In The Pink means good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, click subscribe because you were in the right place. So the first thing you need to do before trying to put a tampon in is know your anatomy, meaning know what is what down there. And this is really tough because if you were just looking down, you can't really see anything. So you have three choices to get past that. Number one, you can use your hands to fill around down there to try to figure out what is what. Number two, you could grab a mirror to help you see your own anatomy. Or number three, you just grab a tampon, jab it around down there, and hope you find what you're looking for. And I mean, all of those options have been tried by millions of women their first time. But I personally think it's a good idea to see what's going on down there. So I personally suggest using a mirror method until you figure things out. And when you look down there, I want to explain what you were seeing because unfortunately, you don't always look like what the anatomy book drawings look like. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna help you figure this out. So basically, there are three holes down there. You have the hole where the pee comes out. This is called the urethra. You have the hole where the poop comes out. This is called the anus. And then finally, the hole where the menstrual blood comes out and the tampon goes in, and that is called the vagina. Now, most people have a pretty good idea of where the poop comes out. We all have experience with that multiple times a week, hopefully. Then you have this little bridge of skin called the perineum. And then you have this area. This is called the external genitalia. And here are basically the two other holes, but they're kind of covered up by your vaginal lips. These are the flaps of skin that you feel when you wipe after going pee. They are called your labia majora and your labia minora. The majora are the bigger ones that are more on the outside, and the minora are the smaller, more fleshy ones that you might feel inside the majora, or in between the majora. And in between the two smaller lips are your other two holes. So your urethra, where the pee comes out, and your vagina. So the urethra is more forward and it's very very small it cannot fit a tampon in there or even a small finger so i don't want you to worry that you might accidentally put your tampon in that hole that's not gonna happen not unless your tampon is like you know that small around okay so you got your pee hole which is your urethra is up here your poop hole or your anus which is way down here and then in the middle you have your vagina and this is where you want your tampon to go now when you look in the mirror you might not see an obvious hole where your vagina is some women do and some women don't and the reason is that around the opening of the vagina you have a muscle that keeps the vagina closed and that muscle has to relax in order for the tampon to go in some women might also have a small piece of skin that covers part of the vagina and that is called the hymen now that small piece of skin is often broken long before you've ever tried to put a tampon in activities like riding a bike or horseback riding or sports can all unintentionally rupture that that doesn't mean that you're not a virgin just because that happens it's actually pretty common for that piece of skin to rupture before you ever have intercourse. But if it's still intact, that might cover or hide the opening of your vagina. Now, after you've had a baby or even after you become sexually active, the opening of the vagina might appear a little bit more open, but not always. But back to your tampon. At this point, as you look in the mirror, you might not see an obvious opening for the vagina, but here's how to find it. So you remember that bridge of skin that I told you about earlier that's called the perineum that goes between your anus and your vagina? So if you use your tampon or your finger and you feel that perineum moving away from your anus, so the hole where your poop comes out, moving away from that, when that regular piece of skin disappears and you feel more mushy, wet tissue, that's pretty much where your vaginal opening is. Okay, next step, let's talk about the tampon itself. 
So you can either have a tampon with or without an applicator. It's up to you. But if you want to use an applicator, this is what it looks like. The applicator simply helps you to put the tampon all the way into your vagina, basically making it so you don't have to use your finger to do it. Now, most people prefer that, but some people prefer no applicator. So whatever is available to you and whatever your preference is. So I'm gonna take the tampon out of the applicator. So this is what the actual tampon looks like. It is usually made up of cotton and rayon, and then you've got the string. Now the tampon is very absorbable, so watch what happens when you put one in water. See how quickly it absorbs, and also how much water it can absorb. It also has this string attached to it. Now I have had a lot of comments in some of my other tampon videos about being nervous that the string is gonna break inside you. So, if that's a concern for you, grab a tampon right now, just go get one, and then I want you to take it out of the wrapping, take it out of the applicator, okay? So you got it just like this. And now I want you to pull on the string, like really pull on it. Try as hard as you can to make that string come off. Okay, I bet that you will not be able to. I certainly wasn't able to. So if you're worried about the string breaking, I hope that puts your mind at ease. So I want you to grab your tampon again, and if you choose to use an applicator, have the applicator with you. I want you to practice a few times just working the tampon with the applicator. So you wanna grab the tampon with two of your fingers and to where your thumb can push on the plunge down here. And just practice pushing that plunger and making the tampon go out. See that? And you can actually just open up the plunger. You kind of have to thread it back through here. There we go. And then you can put the tampon back in and then you can practice it again. Just do it a few times to be able to get a hang of what it feels like to depress that plunger and push the tampon out. Okay, so now that you know where the tampon goes and how the tampon and the applicator work, let's move on to step number three and that is picking the right tampon for you. Because there are big ones and there are small ones and there are ones that are a little bit shorter and ones that are a little bit longer. My advice is that if this is the first time that you're putting a tampon in, pick the very smallest that you have. I don't care if you're on a very, very heavy flow day. For the first few times, it's just a matter of practicing the motions, practicing what it feels like, and believe me, you're gonna wanna use the smallest tampon that you have. On that same note, I also recommend that if possible, until you're more comfortable with putting a tampon in, you should put it in when your flow is the heaviest. So your menstrual blood actually acts as a lubricant to help the tampon to slip in and out much more easily. So if you are not actually on your period, I don't recommend trying to put a tampon in for the first time because that dry tampon, rubbing on your dry vaginal tissue, it can be uncomfortable and it can be a lot harder to take it out and to put it in. It also can create a little bit of friction when you're trying to pull it out or push it in and that can cause some pain. So once you have all of that figured out, you can move on to the next step where you are actually putting your tampon in. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You could either put the tampon in while you are just sitting on the toilet, or you could put one leg up on the toilet or the bathtub or a chair or whatever you have available, or you could actually just squat and try to put a tampon in that way. I would say that most people either put it on while sitting on the toilet or put it on while standing with one leg up on the toilet or on the bathtub. But whatever position is the most comfortable for you, that's what you're gonna wanna do. So I actually have two different models of the uterus and I'm gonna demonstrate it with both of these. Both of them show you a little bit different angle. The more that you can see how it goes in and how to position it, the easier that it's gonna be for you. So let's start with this one right here. This one's not very anatomical per se, but I do like that it's see-through so that you can have a little bit better idea of what's going on on the inside. I talked about the anus, and that's down here. The urethra, which is really more up here, and then right down here is the vagina, right in there. So when you put a tampon in, you want to hold the tampon like I told you, 
and you want to find the vaginal opening. And like I mentioned before, a good way is to fill that perineum, that skin in between your anus and your vagina, and then move up towards your front. When you feel that drop off, that mushy tissue, that is where your vaginal hole is. Once you feel that, then you want to uh, push the tampon in about 45 degrees. So you're pushing it in towards your low back. And you want to go all the way till your fingers touch the vaginal opening. Once you have it in that position, then you use your finger to push the plunger down. And make sure it goes all the way in. And then you pull the plunger out. Now, you want to be careful when you're pulling the plunger out that you don't have a hold of the string too because if you pull it out and you accidentally have a hold of the string you might pull the tampon right out with it i'm going to demonstrate now on this model this doesn't have all the other anatomy on it this is just your uterus and the vagina the reason why i want to demonstrate with this one is because i want you to see when people are worried about the tampon getting lost, stuck up there, I want you to see why that really doesn't happen. So this is the vaginal opening right here. And when you insert that tampon, it hits the top of that cervix and it can't go any further. Yes, there is a small teeny tiny little hole at the top of the cervix, um, which is the top part of your vagina, but it's too small, way too small for a tampon to go in. So when you put that tampon in, till your fingers touch the vaginal opening, the top of the applicator is almost all the way to the top of your vagina. Sometimes it's even touching your cervix. And then when you deploy it, it stays, hopefully in real life, it stays in the vagina as you pull the applicator out. If you find that when you're putting the tampon in, it's getting stuck, Okay, that usually means you're putting it in the wrong direction. So you could be having it and it's hitting the vaginal wall. So if you find that you're, it's stuck and it's not going further in, what you wanna do is stop, pull it out a little bit, redirect it, and then continue to push in. And then if you find that you reach another wall, like then you just stop again, back up, redirect it, and then continue to push it all the way in. Um, one mistake that people do is they want to deploy it at the very bottom of the vaginal opening. And the problem is when they do that and they deploy it down here, then the tampon is halfway in and halfway out of the vagina. And that is super uncomfortable. I can't stand it when that's going on. So when that happens, you have two choices. You can either just pull it out and try again, or if you're comfortable, you can wash your hands and then just take one finger and push it all the way up, whatever you're comfortable with. And I forgot to mention, before you put your tampon in, make sure to wash your hands just because sometimes your hands do touch around the vaginal opening. You don't want to be doing anything that can introduce bacteria into the vagina. So wash your hands before you start putting a tampon in and also wash your hands afterwards too. So I hope that was helpful for you. I know it's a little bit scary the first time. I remember my first time, it wasn't fun, but with practice, it will get easier. Now, if you aren't really comfortable with tampons and you've tried and tried and tried, and it's just not working out for you, you do have another option. I mean, of course you have pads and that's great if you wanna do that, but more recently they have developed something called period underwear. They did not have that when I was a kid. I think it's pretty cool, but it is basically very, very, very absorbent underwear. There's tons of different brands out there, but you can wear it in place of a pad. They even have swimsuits. So if you wanna go swimming, it's the summer and you don't wanna put a tampon in, you can wear these swimsuits and you don't need to wear a tampon. So I just think that's brilliant. I will link to them in my video description. Check them out if you wanna try that as an alternative to using a tampon. But I do have another video about things that could cause your tampon to be hurting. If you liked this video, if you found it informative, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It means the world to me and also, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of my future videos. Now right here, I'm gonna put one of my other videos about what can cause your tampon to hurt. So you definitely need to check on that. So click on that video right here and I'll see you over there.
the packets all look fairly similar. Some packets are round and some are rectangular. But if you have a 28 day packet, which is the most common birth control pack, you are gonna see two different colors of pills.